In this video, I'm going to teach you how to properly set up the Rodecaster Pro 2 Integrated Audio Production Studio. I've set it up for multiple clients now. I've used it for multiple shows. I've put on a good couple months with it, and there's some things that can trip you up with the setup that I'm going to go over right now that are very important not to skip when you're setting this mixer up. This may solve some of your issues as well with the mixer. Got it? Let's get into it. Here's my mixer right here. First of all, get the dust cover already. You bought, you spent all that money on the mixer, get the dust cover. All right, couple pro tips for all of you. Plug your actual headphones, the ones that are in your ears, into channel one, okay? Don't do channel two, three, or four. Why? When you hit the monitor buttons down here at the bottom of the mixer, they only monitor in number one. Cool? All right, that's pro tip number one. Pro tip number two. I don't recommend plugging in your speakers into the speaker output on the mixer. Why? If you have extra jacks available here under headphones, plug them into the headphone jacks here. Why would you do that? Because you have physical control over physical knobs for your speakers. So if you have extra headphone jacks available, plug your speakers into them. I've got two sets of speakers plugged into those headphone jacks, and I can physically control when they're on or off here with using these physical knobs Huge quality of life upgrade. Okay, pro tip about the sound pads. Keep in mind you have multiple banks of sound pads over here that you can scroll through using these buttons at the bottom. Do not ignore the sound pads and set them up properly. What you're going to do is click the sound button here if you have that on that fader. Go through each individual sound. Make sure you actually want it. Click configure smart pads. Choose each individual sound. Do the color, name, edit it, and go through all of the process for each sound and make sure that each one is what you want. And you can fill up everything with sound effects, with music, whatever you want it to be, and make sure all of the colors are unique on your sound pads based on what you want them to be. That way they're actually usable. That way you can actually identify them. That way if applause in your head is orange, when you hit the applause button, it's intuitive for you to know that that's there. Got it? Set up the sound pads properly and keep in mind there's multiple banks. None of my clients knew there were multiple banks. Just hit the button, you can go through all the banks and you can program them in. Seems like it should be intuitive, but it's not. Okay, pro tip, hit the cog. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go to faders. What do you need to do here under faders? Make sure that your physical faders that are here on the mixer only have stuff that you're actually using there. Don't leave extra channels there that you're not using. It will be confusing and it will clutter your mixer. So for example, I'm not actually using microphone number two right now. So what I can do is click that channel, click none, then hit the check mark up here and it gets rid of that channel and grays it out on my mixer. It's less information for your brain to have to deal with on this freaking mixer. And it lets you more simply operate the mixer as you see fit. Don't forget, let's say all your physical faders are filled first. You can click virtual faders as well, and you can uh, assign a virtual fader anything that you want if you run out of physical faders. In this case, I have a physical fader available, so I should get rid of that virtual fader. I hit none and then check, and then I can add Bluetooth in this case by clicking the physical fader and hitting check, and now it's on the physical fader. Physical faders are better than virtual faders because you can obviously physically control the buttons and it gives you less clutter here on the main screen when you're controlling the mixer, which is really important, okay? So I recommend filling up the physical faders only with what you need first, then moving forward on virtual faders after that. Don't fill up virtual faders and have a bunch of junk on your interface. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, each of these little green ears here helps you monitor that channel. And obviously the red button below helps you mute that channel. I recommend using headphones almost all the time with this mixer because it's so easy to hit the green button to monitor and the red button to mute simultaneously. Uh, if you don't want to use headphones, the monitoring functionality on this mixer is limited uh, if unless you plug your speakers into channel one. So remember, the monitoring functionality is for channel one, channel one, channel one. Just remember that. Okay, with each individual channel, like let's say you're setting up a microphone. Do not just do the defaults here on your microphone. Actually take time to go through the process. Select the appropriate microphone on that channel when you're setting up your microphone. 
And whenever you're speaking into your microphone, you see the levels here? You wanna be in the green, but never going into the red, even when you get loud like I am right now, it's never going into the red, okay? That's where you wanna be. And then when you're quiet, I'm gonna be quiet really quick. You're gonna to wanna to see nothing there at the bottom, okay? That is optimal. If you're seeing noise down there at the bottom, but you got a little bit of high volume, you can turn the levels down with the minus button to get it in the sweet spot, got it? Cool. With the processing, I recommend trying the presets first before diving into all the other settings. So neutral sounds a little bit flatter than the way I sounded a moment ago. Podcast studio sounds a little bigger. It's kind of like a medium size sound. And broadcast sounds super blown out and huge like the way I like to sound. Use the presets first. Find a preset that is appropriate and kind of in the ballpark that you want. Then you can click the advanced tab here and go into each individual processing and effect and change those settings individually. The presets are insane. I'd say for 90% of you guys out there, you will find either through neutral podcast studio or broadcast, a preset that is appropriate for you that you find to be great. Another setup item, you can do local recording if you want to without using a computer, but you need to plug in a storage card on the back of the mixer. So buy that storage card, plug it in, it'll go ahead and configure it for you, and you can have a backup recording on this mixer whenever you're recording, or you can take it on the go. This is not just to plug into your computer or do local recording, it does both at the same time. And the last pro tip I'll tell you is if you have multiple computers and multiple devices, plug in both of them into this mixer to control both. Don't have your speakers plugged directly into computer one and the mixer on computer two. Use this mixer to do both and to have complete omni control over everything in your studio using one device. So as you can see here, I've got USB one on this fader right here. That's my computer I'm recording on right now. And on USB two, I've got my second computer giving me complete control over the audio of both computers with two physical faders, one device combining. Last tip I'm gonna give you, use the chat channel. Whenever you're using Zoom or any other um, communication software, use the chat channel as your output there. So whenever you're in Zoom and, and it asks you what are your quote unquote speakers that you're using to listen to audio, choose USB chat. It'll put that chat on its own channel in the mixer right here and you can control how loud people are on Discord, on Zoom, on Skype, through a chat channel physically on your mixer so that their audio isn't jammed up with all the other audio on your computer that you're listening to. You can control their audio separately, you can monitor their audio separately, and you can keep chat on a physical fader right here so you're in complete control of your audio. Those are the most important tips I can give you with this mixer. Do not add Rode Unify software on top of this mixer. Try using just the routing inside the mixer first before using Rode's Unify software. Rode's Unify software is a digital mixing solution that does a lot of what the Rodecaster Pro does, Pro 2 does, but by adding another software layer on top of this mixer for routing, you're gonna run into a freaking audio nightmare where you can't figure out what's connected to what. So try doing the routing in this mixer first before adding other software layers, such as Elgato Wavelink, such as Rode uh, Unify, or other digital mixing solutions. I hope this setup video was helpful. Those are the pro tips I've learned that have hung people up and just screwed them over, getting echo and all kinds of problems, thinking their mixer is broken and even sending it back sometimes. It's not broken. Just go through step by step, set each item up, and take your time. This is a complex and beautiful piece of equipment that deserves your respect. And if you give it that time and respect, it'll perform for you for years. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy your mixer.